When it comes to defense, Manny Pacquiao reigns supreme as king of the earmuffs. Plenty of boxers fight using a high guard, but few use it as dynamically as Pacquiao. As with much of his current style, Manny owes his defensive acumen to Freddie Roach. And for his part, Roach appears to have based Pacquiao's defense on that of Marlon Starling, whom a young Roach helped train while apprenticing under legendary trainer Eddie Futch. In the 1980s, Starling was a fixture of the welterweight top five and capped off his career by beating Lloyd Hunnigan to become the lineal champion. He did all of this with a unique and undeniably effective style of defense, mixing a tight but flexible high guard with excellent upper body movement and footwork. When using a high guard, one of the biggest mistakes most fighters make is to think of it as a static defense making it only a matter of time till a clever fighter finds a way around or through the gloves. Simply holding the hands up is not enough. Starling's mastery lay in his ability to twist and turn while defending, bringing his hands into the path of the opponent's punches without having to move the hands themselves. Pacquiao is no Marlon Starling, but he's much harder to hit cleanly than opponents expect him to be, thanks to this subtle turning and shifting. Of course, fights aren't won with defense alone, and Pacquiao excels at using his defense to set up his offense. Once again, he uses one of Marlon Starling's tried and true methods to land his most devastating counters. Starling and Pacquiao both excel at throwing what I call trigger counters, where the guard acts like a sort of tripwire to initiate a counter punch. Starling's go-to trigger counter was the right hand. He would block the right hand of the opponent and come back with one of his own. Pacquiao's specialty, on the other hand, is the hook, which we looked at in episode one of this series. The concept is beautifully simple. When his guard is struck, Pacquiao instantly knows two things about his opponent. One, his left hand is extended and therefore unable to defend. And two, he is close enough to hit me therefore I am close enough to hit him. The right hook is an almost automatic response in this situation, and that immediacy makes it a very serious threat. Finally, Pacquiao's high guard works because it is not his only line of defense. Also, just like Starling, who knew when to block and when to move. You see, because of his tight guard and willingness to stand in the pocket, Starling's opponents tended to get used to swinging and landing. They rarely connected with clean, scoring blows, but because they made contact with his gloves and arms, they would commit more and more to each punch, hoping to knock Starling off balance or drive through his guard with sheer force. That made it all the more surprising when, suddenly, Starling wasn't there to be hit. The counter punches his flailing opponents ran straight into were just the icing on the cake. Likewise, Pacquiao combines his blocking and parrying with constant, unpredictable upper body movement. Opponents will vacillate between desperately trying to penetrate his defense and simply extending their hands to see where he is. Pacquiao is happy to use both reactions as a chance to dole out some punishment. Manny Pacquiao is not thought of as a defensive fighter, but that's because his defense only serves to initiate more of his stunning offense. They say that the art of boxing is to hit and not get hit. And hit comes first for a reason. If you enjoyed this installment of Secret Weapons, check out the rest of the series on bloodyelbow.com and badlefthook.com using the link in the description. I'm Connor Rebush, and thanks for watching.